Along a storm-ravaged coast on the northeast corner of the Olympic Peninsula sits Fort Warden. It was built as the last line of defense against enemies trying to attack naval bases in Puget Sound and the cities of Everett, Seattle, and Tacoma. Fort Warden, Fort Flagler, and Fort Casey formed an armed triangle that could destroy any enemy ships that dared enter Puget Sound. Fort Warden, arguably, held the most powerful artillery of its time. A series of batteries and armaments lined a sea cliff, ready to strike. Construction on Fort Warden began in 1898 and continued through 1920. The military acquired civilian land and structures, including Alexander's Castle, which still stands today. In 1953, the U.S. Army decommissioned Fort Warden. The base had never fired a shot in the country's defense. It became a youth detention center in 1957, and then finally the fort became a state park in 1973. Fort Warden then became a National Historic Landmark in 1976. Now, you may be asking yourself why this former military base would interest a group of ghost hunters. That's because Fort Warden has a very dark history. From murders, suicides, and accidental deaths, the former soldiers have imprinted themselves, leaving ghostly activity at a slew of buildings. And for this documentary, we'll explore two buildings with paranormal significance. But first... Captain Frank Templeton Thornton. He was a man who lived to serve his country. Born in 1876, he grew up in Bedford, Indiana, with his grandmother, father, and four siblings. Frank joined the Army after he graduated high school. He became a member of the Coastal Artillery and fought in the Spanish-American War between 1898 and 1899. He achieved accolades for his service in the Philippines. After the war, he was reassigned to the Presidio in San Francisco, California, a place he loved. He even bought a home there. Frank worked his way up from private to first lieutenant between 1898 and 1910. From his records, you can see how much he loved the service and by all accounts, was an exemplary officer. But something happened between 1906 and 1911. He got married and divorced. He even fought his reassignments, due to his promotions, to Fort Levitt in Maine and Fort Warden in Washington. In May 1911, the recently promoted Captain Thornton arrived at Fort Warden, a very changed man. The once highly regarded officer became a drunken rabble rouser, and the post commanders were to discipline him. In August of that year, distraught, and thinking his career was over, Captain Thornton drank a bottle of vodka, as well as most of his sleeping aid, and died in the bricks. The news made national headlines, and the military listed it as an accidental death in the line of duty. Captain Thornton was laid to rest at his beloved Presidio. His pallbearers were the men once under his command there, and tonight, our haunted heritage will try to communicate with him at the Bricks Building in Captain Thornton's residence at Fort Warden. Okay, so today we're gonna use an open circle to invite any spirits in with us. We're gonna start by holding hands to try and amplify the energy. And I'll do a small welcome and invitation and then we can release hands um, and we'll start asking questions. So gathered souls, we're embarking on this journey to connect with you, with spirits connected to this place. 
We come with open minds and compassion to hear your stories. Let the veil between our world and the spirit realm be lifted as we open ourselves to the energies that surround us. Please use this box in front of us or any of the equipment to try to answer our questions so we can hear you. Thank you for allowing us to talk to you and be respectful of your space. And we'll be starting now. We can go ahead and release hands. And we'll go ahead and start asking questions. I'll kick off. Um, there's one person in particular I think I really want to start with, and that's Captain Frank Thornton. So we'd love to hear from Captain Thornton if you're here. And then we also brought him objects. Maybe you could talk about the objects we brought him to um, respect his military service and maybe give, make, give him reminders of his old military days. Yeah, why don't you pull some of those up there? We have actual purple hearts here, dog tags, ammunition, old letters from World War II and before, medical rations, and a whistle. So, Captain Thornton, are you here with us? Can you make your presence known? Did you live here for six years? If you did, can you touch this? This device, if you touch it or go around it, the color will change. Oh, You're trying to get through? Trying to get through. That's awesome. That's great. Captain Thorne, you can touch this. You can touch any of these purple lights. They won't hurt you. It'll just let us know you're here. Did it say I don't know what I'm doing? Yeah, I think it did. You're doing great. You just need to use your energy to try and make words come through this box or touch any of the other ones. Frank, why didn't you like it here? What just happened? The light died. Looks like the second light that's died and they were both full. Is there someone else who wants to introduce themselves? Get out. Get out? You know. Is it difficult to communicate with us? Hey. So Jake. What the heck? Yeah. Jake. So it's almost the anniversary. Is that true? Captain Thornton, how many spirits are in here? How many officers are with you right now? Let's say 12. Yesterday, when you... Yesterday, you when <laughs> You did say 12. I heard 12. So, if there are 12 spirits here, can one of you say your name? So it's interesting. We thought we heard 12, though, when we yep. were specifically talking about the number of spirits. So I am interested to see if, um, you know, who those 12 are, if there's really 12. Who do we have? I mean, the entire grounds here, yes, we're in the single officer's quarters. But while this didn't see, you know, but wasn't involved in any battles or see any deaths like that. There, there have been many deaths at the fort. So, um, you know, any way you look, we could pick out a building that's had some deaths. And particularly, there was the hospital across the way. Uh, the Spanish flu was really big here. Um, you know, as we mentioned, we had a lot of suicides here. Uh, there were murders, murder suicides. So. I I'm, I'm just trying to figure out who we've got coming, like, you know, coming in. There's potentially for so many spirits here. It's great. Are you with us now? 
Did you not like, did you not like the radio? It was really loud, huh? Feel ya, friend. Would you like us, please let that light up all the way to the top strongly if you want us to turn the volume back up. Can you light that up if you want us to keep the volume off? We okay. keep it up. Do you like this device to talk to us? If you can light it all the way up to the top again, if your answer is yes. Do you like using that device to talk to us? Light it all the way up. Put your energy into it. Did you know this will do the same? You can pick if you want it to say yes or no. So we can ask some yes or no questions. Would you be willing to talk to us that way? I'm going to roll some EVP while we do that. Might yeah, yeah. It's a great idea. Are there more than five spirits here? You read my mind, Jake. We've got a new box on the table here. We're trying Ashes. We're trying to find ways to help you speak. If there's a word you want to say, use your energy and put it into this device. Anyone can use it. Mm -hmm. One of the spirits here with us, did you take your own life? Um, did anyone pass who doesn't know why, doesn't remember what happened? Possibly was a drinker and might have just drank and Never woke up. Yes, sir. Yes, Were sir. you in the band? Were you in the 6th Coastal Artillery Band? Okay. Did you drink vodka? That's Morse code. Is it? What's it saying? Just a sec. Five million went so fast the first time. It's growling. I'm going to have to get you some cheese, please. Thank you. Was that all Morse code? Mm -hmm. And that's coming so fast and piled on top of each other, I wouldn't be sure. You can use the lights behind Melissa also if there's more than one who wants to talk. Are you mad? Do you... Would you like a shot? Just one more shot of vodka? For old time's sake, we have some. It's the good stuff. We have. Was it an accident? Was your death an accident? He doesn't know. He doesn't. He. Yeah, he doesn't know. The, the, what happened? Do you understand you're dead? I have insomnia. Did you have insomnia? It's 
happening back there? Jake's getting a shot from his brother in arms. Would you like that shot? Do you, do you want Corporal to bring you a shot? Spirit. Nice and cold. The spirit. Nice oh. and cold. Here comes a nice cold shot. Ooh, that is cold. Why don't you put that down in front of her next to Avi? That's for you. Good vodka, USA, New York. Did you drink alcohol to help you focus? Did you drink alcohol to help you sleep? Did you ever go into town to drink at any of the saloons? Did you used to get in fights? What steps are just Jake? What saloon would you go to? I like see What's Shatterbox. Was the casino saloon? Was there one the candy something? I can't remember the name. Candy. Can you help me remember the name of that saloon? It was candy. Religion. It says religion. Oh. Do we have oh, to the Alexander? What did it say? Religion. Well, after yeah, that, it, after just said that something. it just said something. Necessary. Religion was necessary in your life. Did you start, were you Catholic? You started drinking? In, in church, is, you've had your first drink in church. You just started drinking wine. Smooth. I think it's pissed. I should get lights the booze on the table. Yeah, we'll take that off. Would you like us to remove that? Gone. Can you, would you like us to take it? What? Angry. Angry. Fate. I'm sorry. We're not trying to be disrespectful. You were right. He's talking. He said angry and fate. It was his fate. Because he's always he asked why he was drinking. Did you drink for this? Drink for that? Um, he is always. He was always drink. He basically never doesn't remember when he wasn't drinking. He started drinking young. It was part of his religion. Part of family. Was your father he, drunk? He calmed down. Well, it's so, been removed and it calmed down. We're not sure. Did you find it, did it anger you we put a shot of vodka on the table? Who is this? Who is, t who is talking with us right now? Who's communicating with us? I think he's still really upset. Is this John? Mr. Alexander? Reverend of a Presbyterian church? It's still in town.
even the uh, and I'll say it even the ovulus was uh, triggering the emotions saying anger and all that with the, the vodka okay. I'd like confirmation was it the vodka on the table that upset you can you tell me the lights flashing are very confusing at this point can you use that box to choose a word to tell me if you were mad about the alcohol on the table Thank you for Yell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, okay. when it is blanking like that, I just think of someone going bam, bam, bam to get your attention. Yeah. So, so you feel like you need to yell. It is frustrating to communicate with us. Uh, we're doing the best that we can with the equipment that we have. Dang. It's I understand the frustration. We are trying to listen. Let's try and we'll slow down. It's We're going to ask your name. So we ask this to stop. Mm -hmm. It stopped. And we ask for validate or confirmation with the ovulus. It said a word. It said words, yes. But Jake, is the vodka on an island in the kitchen? It is on the island in the kitchen. So it said yell, island, island. yell. So it, That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Does he want you to dump it or? Shh. Do you want us to throw the alcohol out? Deal. Deal. Okay. Why? We're going to do this slowly. So we're going to give you two options. You can touch that machine when it gets to the letter of your last name, or you'll let us know. We'll start reading through them slowly. And you light up only when you hear the letter, the first letter of your last name. He's getting pissed. We didn't, someone saw I mean, something. It was like, and it was, yeah. it wasn't like how oh, this is, you know, this is fuzzy. The shadow wasn't fuzzy. It was very distinct and outlined. And then it would come out this way. And then it would come back. And it was, oh. that's why I thought it was somebody behind me. Where did you see this? But so did we wall, have a shadow right? figure infiltrate our investigation? And they were the person mimicking the J portal, the ovulus, we don't know. Could that be our angry men? What is that? Was this door locked? This door should not. It was making like something walking Yeah, it was the sound it made, right? When you step. Yeah, and that's the sound. Go yeah. back, go back. No, no, there's a specific board. Hold on. Where were you? That one. It back. Back. It wasn't creaky. That. Right there. That's the sound we heard. And then rummaging in like our ship. Like That's plastic. Rummaging. Like somebody was getting into the. the... Did your bag didn't just open up? No. That it's... happens with the Mylar ship. No, it sounded like this. Like. Not like I heard it too. Here. Like that, don't you think? And then more moving. And then that board, the clicking, that clicking, creaking, not the squeaking, the, the clicking. Not even that. Thing. It was like it was creeping like this. That's not the door, Amy Spud. Hold on. Oh. Like this. Not the radiator sound. 
Hello? Reaching around and leaving the door open, doesn't that sound kind of juvenile? It does. It's all those snacks. And yeah. we have the cookies and candy, maybe it's more from the juvenile detention. I tried taking my hair down and playing with it to see if that would help anything. Um, so Rachel? Yes? There's a small childlike figure playing with your hand as you stroke your hair. Is the air cold? No. I don't have any coldness. He's like literally holding your hand. inching over to you. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? And the night time when, we're, when I was in bed, it was just a lot of um, there was a lot of banging coming from like upstairs. I could hear what sounded like the cabinets closing in the kitchen. Um, and an interesting thing happened that also followed along with what Melissa and Merle experienced earlier in the evening where I could hear on two different occasions somebody walking down the hall into like the kitchen area and I could hear the sound of somebody rummaging around with the stuff on the table um, to the point where I got up and I came out because I thought it was you or it was somebody like an actual person who had gotten up and was up and moving around in the kitchen and nobody was there and everybody was still in bed so that was a very uh, exciting experience for like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., because it happened twice. Um, during, it was actually earlier this morning, I thought I heard you come down the hall, but I could tell, first of all, that it really wasn't your gait when you walk, and second of all, you had shoes on, you know, or the sound had shoes on, and it only came down the hall it didn't ever go back so I don't know what it was it was like hard sold shoes so that was kind of cool it's kind of cool I uh I barricaded my door with my bag in case something was going to open it so tonight I'm just gonna leave everything open and uh, we'll see if we, we get a visit from a ghost I think two nights in at Fort Warren is not enough. I think this place you could easily do four with all the different buildings. We're, we're just scraping the surface of the history here and the tragedies and the ghosts. It's extremely active. I haven't been that creeped out or alarmed thinking, is it a ghost or an intruder in quite some time? So I'll see what tonight brings at the castle. Well, we got home about two o'clock in the morning, pretty tired, headed up to bed on the second floor here, and I couldn't fall asleep, couldn't get comfortable, so I'm just laying there, it's probably around 4 a.m., and I hear heavy footsteps creaking in the creaking wood coming up the stairs, and we've got nowhere to go there, so I thought, oh my gosh, somebody's in here. Nope. Nobody. Just phantom footsteps. So in the bedroom, we have a sink and a like, little vanity. And I was here alone, and I was brushing my teeth, getting ready. And I was thinking about the death that had occurred here in the basement, thinking about it pretty heavily. And the light above the vanity flickered. But the other light didn't. So I'm thinking, okay, that's weird. 
check everything. It's all tight on there. So I go about my business again. And I said, okay, William, if this is you, William is our guy who died in the basement. So William, if this is you, go ahead, make that light turn off again. Light turns off, comes back on. So I said, okay, is this random? Got to do it again for me. If that's you, turn it off, turn it back on. Light turns off, turns back on again. So I took it as a positive sign and asked him to come back and talk to us tonight. Well, when we got back from dinner, I wanted to maybe rest up a little before our investigation tonight and was tucked away on the couch and reached over and turned out the light on the lamp. And I thought I'd heard some moving around and Crystal said, hey, were you just upstairs? And I'm like, like 10 minutes ago. She's like, no, just right before that lamp turned off, were you upstairs? I said, no, I've been down here. We'd heard footsteps up in the bedroom above us. Again, no one else is here, just Crystal and I. Lovely cats. No, I love weird cats. Those hairless cats freak me out. Not four of them, and they'd always look out the, the windows. Yeah. yeah, well, we have one confirmed okay. death here. Uh, but the story starts with James B. Alexander. Uh, he's from England, uh, but he comes here, purchases this land on this bluff, Madrona Bluff, in gold. $250 in gold bars. Not cash, gold. Gold. Gold bars. Uh, so he wants to build a castle. It ends up looking a little bit more like a rook from a chessboard, but he builds a castle for his fiance, who's in Scotland. He finishes the house, goes back to Scotland to get her, and she has married another. He returns here and quits his job as the rector of the, I think it's the Presbyterian Church in town, and the church is still standing, and becomes, is assigned as the vice consul to Queen Victoria. Um, and so he lives here until 1892, then he moves to Tacoma where all of the vice consuls for different uh, countries had offices in the same building together. And he leaves the castle in the care of his friend Oscar Clocker, uh, who's also a vice consul to a variety of countries over the year, Peru, Chile. Um, and so Clocker has a caretaker living here named William Payne. William's not living here, I think it's maybe six, eight months. Mm -hmm. And just before Christmas in 1892, he goes into Port Townsend, buys a big jug of whiskey, and borrows a horse from somebody and says, I'll be back with the horse in the morning. Next morning comes around, Mr. Payne doesn't show up. They, it's right before Christmas, so they give it another day. The guy finally comes out, finds his horse, starving, sitting right out here, just grazing. And William's dog, a border collie, is just starving and dehydrated, but he can't find William. So he goes back into town, he tells the sheriff, he tells the clockers. They come back out on the 26th of December, and they're looking around. They go down into the basement, because at that time, the third floor here had a large water tank. And the basement had a large cistern to collect uh, rainwater. So they go down there looking around, there's a hole at the top of the cistern, and they look through the hole, and there is William Payne, wow. dead. He had fallen through this hole, knocked himself out, and drowned in water that wasn't deep enough to cover his body. So there's our first death. Now, flash forward a little to 2015, and there is a Washington-based paranormal group who is here investigating, and they claim on a news show that my Corporal Henry E. Thompson, that this was the location of his death, the robbery, death, and dismemberment, and burning, which is a logical deduction 
because at one point around the 40s, this building did serve as the post Taylor shop. But um, at the time that Corporal Henry Thompson was murdered, each regiment had their own tailor that was in their own barracks. So I think we're here to just make sure that we disprove this because uh, there's some, some of the news reports at the time were a little kludgy on the details of right. where his body was found. So we want to make sure we investigate that tonight thoroughly, make sure we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's on that aspect. That's the way we do it. So that's a, it's a high level. So hold hands to try and amplify the energy. And once again, I am going to invite any previously human spirits to come and talk with us this evening, to interact with us on this full moon with some extra electromagnetic energy. We're hoping that the veil can be thinned and lifted between our realm and the spirit realm. We come with love and compassion and an openness and earnest to hear your stories. Please use the equipment that we have available to try to answer our questions or communicate with us. When you returned from Scotland, you quit your position as rector of the church. Can you tell us why? I suppose. I suppose. I believe your dog ended up being okay. It was hungry and dehydrated. Or, or horse. horse. The horse was also okay. It, it was grazing on what grass it could hear. Where's my... Body is in the basement here. What made you go down to check the cistern that night? Mr. Alexander, why did your... It said yes. What was the last question you asked? Oh, was that you with the light upstairs? Yeah. It says yes. It said yes. So I can't understand a lot of what's being said, but like some weird things have been said. Yeah. Is is Avi on? We'll turn this off if you yeah. want to try Avi. Yeah, you want to try. So, any of the human spirits that are here with us, uh, so far we've we've been reaching out yeah. to Mr. No, Alexander. No. No was tapped. What was the last question we asked? Starve. The the horse and the yes. dog were starving. Castle. We're in a castle. Yeah. They do call this Alexander's Castle, yes. Where is the clock? Slave. Did you pass away by accident? Everything just kind of seems to have gone still. Yeah. Like, it, it feels different in here, do you think? Like... No, it's the furnace, but it got really cold. I also, you know, a lot of people have been here before asking about Corporal Henry Thompson. You know, we believe that that did not happen here. Your murder did not happen here. But earlier today, we visited your grave, and I invited you to come here and visit with us today to talk. Henry, can you muster up one word for for us? In this device right here, put all your energy into it in one word. Can you say what happened? We're killed in this building. Chest. Did you know, Mr. Holt? God. I was sitting here listening to Melissa tell some history and ask some questions uh, to... Who are we talking to? Uh, 
Henry. To Henry. And I was asking the number of people involved. Yes. And I felt something, or someone I assumed was you, push my chair. To be specific, touch this and go like that. You can use this box to tell us your name. Or if you want to light that up to let me know if you want us to turn this box on again, the J portal, to communicate with us. If a spirit would like to communicate with us through this box, did that light up? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we'll look. Okay, yeah. we're gonna turn this back on. But so it's like that. We've in we've opened up this table here. <laughs> we've opened up this table here with an extra seat. We're hoping that you can join us and talk to us. Can you? Do you feel welcome to talk to us? No. Wait, it says yes now. Thank you. Yes. Jake, you literally just read my mind right here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to add something new that you can try to use to communicate with us. Mike, you want to talk them through how to use that? Yeah, so this is just called a REM pod. It's a nice little light. And all you need to do is touch on or around the, the antenna, like this. You need to touch and it. it will not hurt you? Nope. See? It'll hurt your ears. Just like that. <laughs> but it is safe. We're not going to spend much time trying to talk to you, James, or communicate with you. Personally, I hope you're not here. I just want to know if you're here. Can you let us know? Did that say I've been reached? It did. Henry, did you know your attackers? Yes. Wow. He, he did. Yeah. Were you friends with your attackers? Any of them? <laughs> Let's face it. Yep. Were you friends with Thomas Knight? Or Private... Let's pull the chair up for the floor. Private Gribble? Did you set that off? No. Right. I mean, the range is... I didn't come that close. No. You, you, you but just the floor had to sit somewhere. You have the chair pushed in. Well, thank you for pulling the chair out for him, Jake. Henry, is that you sitting here? So, Mr. Payne, I am thinking that this is access to where the cistern was. If this is how you would have gotten to the, this device here, if someone is in this room with us, you could let us know by selecting a letter that is representative of your name. So when it highlights over a letter, you can select that letter. Just touch the machine and it will let us know whose initial we're talking to. So Mr. Alexander, are you here with us? Can anyone with us pick out a letter and let us know you're here? Thank you. Can you let us know what your name is by also touching a letter? Fort Warden has proven to be a hotbed of ghostly activity. At the Bricks, the team may have connected to the ghost of Captain Frank Thornton, or a nurse from the Fort's youth detention center days that wasn't very happy about vodka being served.
There's also a child spirit that plays with women's hair in the bricks. And don't forget about the phantom footsteps along those hardwood floors. Over in Alexander's castle, a spirit had fun with the team's love of cats. Corporal Johnson may have stopped to sit by the team, and someone had a short message in the upstairs bedroom. As Mike said, two nights is not enough time at Fort Warden.